So if you guys were following along with some of my stuff I posted on Twitter, I talked about how the next videos coming up here are going to be more focused around some of the stuff that I like to bug hunt around um, and that I'm interested in right now. Uh, one of those things was automation and one of those things was source code review for manual hacking. Um, those were kind of the main two ones. This is going to be the first video kind of talking about automation. It's going to be less of a tutorial this time and more of uh, an explanation of where I'm at personally with my automation, my journey, how I got to where I am. And then we're going to start talking about what I do and how I do it. And I'll talk about that in future videos. And of course, I want your guys' feedback on stuff you'd like me to talk about or would like me to show. And we'll try and give videos on that too. Um, but just a disclaimer, uh, I do have automation. It is technically in a private repo right now. Um, but I'm going to try and be as open as possible. I really want to just try and get everything out there and try and get everyone on the same page for me. So hopefully someone trying to go down the same road that I went down with automation can maybe get there. Um, a couple years faster than I did and hopefully maybe then we can get a whole community going around automation and get a lot of people caught up and a lot of people involved in the game because I think that will only help. Um, I don't really want to come at it from a competitive point of view. So again, ask questions here, uh, Twitter especially, or like I said, let me know of stuff you want me to put in this series or want me to talk about and we'll try and make a video about it. But to start, I wanted to just talk about a little bit on this video of where I started and where I'm at kind of right now so people get an idea. Um, another disclaimer is I'm not um, one of the bug bounty automation wizards that are out there. Um, if any of you guys follow bug bounty on Twitter, there's four or five names that are, are really, really high up there as far as success with automation. Um, I am not one of them. I would like to consider that I do pretty well. Um, but I haven't taken any of the stuff that I've made and really like put the money into it to scale it um, as much as I would like to, but hopefully I will soon. Um, but again, this is just my experience. Um, so take it as what you will. So to start, um, I actually did go to school and get a computer engineering degree. So of course, part of that is programming and computer architecture and uh, you know algorithms and data science and, and a little mix of everything kind of. So I did come into this with a programming background, kind of a dev background. I did some dev work um, as a security engineer for the beginning part of my corporate America journey as well. So I have that coming into it. But when I first got into bug bounty automation and first kind of heard about it, um, just like everyone else, I basically just started by using everyone else's tools. So a very good example of that is like Naham Sex Lazy Recon, just a, just a literally an SH script that you handed a domain and you got all this output. And when I first started, I thought that was amazing. Like that was crazy that you just gave it this domain and it ran all these things that you wanted and it put it all in a directory. And I think at the time it even generated like an HTML report for you with some of this stuff. So that was amazing and that's where I started. And then I started to realize that you really have to go further than that. Um, and I started learning about like, maybe there were some new tools that weren't in Lazy Recon or some tools that maybe were better or more in depth or this or that. And so I was like, okay, like maybe that's the gap that I'm missing. And I took something like Lazy Recon and basically did the same thing, but on my own, which was basically just taking the tools that I liked that did the things that I wanted to do and chaining them all together without really worrying about how they worked or what they did or anything like that. I just took, okay, I want subdomain, so I'll take this tool, this tool, this tool, this tool, run all three of these tools, take their outputs, and, you know, sort dash U, you know, to take out duplicates and put it into a mega list of subdomains. And then I'll take that mega list of subdomains and push that into a, you know, a gal or a, you know, a spider or whatever, and that will spider all the subdomains that I found. And then I'll put all that, and then I'll take that output and put it in the next tool, the next tool, the next tool, right? And I ended up with this monolithic script that, in theory, did all of these things. And when I would test it on small domains or something like that, it would work great, pretty cool, um, like purposely vulnerable domains and stuff like that. But then you would point it at real world targets, bug bounty targets, whatever, um, and it would s slow way down. It would error. There'd be false positives. There'd be weird, like glitches you wouldn't expect. You know, the script would stop running or do something weird. And, you know, I wouldn't know where it would happen because it's just one huge script, one huge monolithic script. And if it, let's say I wanted to run it against 10 seed domains, or, you know, I gave it 10 domains to run on, what would end up happening 
because you know you'd get through two of them and maybe i'd just be sitting there letting it run and then it would stop so you have to restart it and you'd have to figure out where it was or like what you missed um and start all over from there so the next thing i realized after realizing that that really doesn't scale to like anything is i started asking around and looking around at what some other people were doing and i realized there were tools like axiom and um, that certain people who were in the automation scene already were actually just using like basically loads of vps servers or virtual private servers from either DigitalOcean or linode or whatever it may be and they were basically just using axiom or, or some personal code or whatever and running you know maybe in a mass over here or finding subdomains from this server and endpoints from this other server and stuff like that so i gave that a try i ended up basically saying okay like i'll use axiom and a bunch of servers and stuff like that and it worked pretty well i was still just using other people's tools but it worked pretty well um, and then i started to realize that it gets expensive very fast again it, it worked smaller domains uh, not so small domains you would have to scale pretty big to get it to work um, and i started to realize that that's kind of a common theme you can't escape but i was curious if there was a way to do it more efficiently so the next step in my journey was realizing that you can kind of do something similar to modern applications today just without an api or anything is you can just have kind of a pub sub model microservice model where you ideally in a perfect world have like one microservice that does one very little thing so you can break it down as much as you want to like at first i broke it down to just like this microservice is going to get subdomains for me and it's going to do all of the subdomain enumeration but then after that i realized it's actually more beneficial to just say this microservice is only going to go run cert.sh searches or is only going to do dns permutation or is only going to run one tool and what i ended up doing was i ended up having all these vps's that were running all these little teeny things and it got hard to manage and i tried to use like axiom and fleets and stuff like that and it, it kind of worked for some tools and didn't work for others and i tried to you know make some homemade code to do it and it kind of worked and it kind of didn't work um and i ran into some you know other problems that were just frustrating like for instance on my digital ocean subscription at least i was only allowed to have 25 vps servers of any size up at one time so the whole thing of like having a bunch of little teeny servers doing things didn't really work um so i had to go a different route and in some of my development experience there's di different ways to spin up microservices and one of those is a containerized solution aka docker and to extension kubernetes so right now i'm building mine with docker and again using that microservice architecture but with docker instead of having one application or one microservice on each server running i have one microservice in each container and those docker containers make it really easy for me to track errors completions data any and any other type of logging coming out of each service so it's very easy to scale and then keep track of. The other thing is you can run a crap load of Docker containers on a single VPS and just scale up the one VPS, or I can run multiple Docker containers across multiple VPSs. So the scalability is way easier. The logging is way easier. Keeping track is way easier. Also development is way easier. I can basically just make one repo for each tool, build out the tool, and then just deploy that repository however i have to in a little micro environment in a container and it's super super lightweight like i think one of my microservices is like maybe 100 megabytes of like docker container size so that docker container can obviously scale to super large um numbers you know hundreds of containers even on like a fairly small server as long as i'm not generating that much traffic out of the server with bandwidth and other things so right now i'm using docker and again if i can pull up here this is kind of what i'm talking about if i can maybe make my screen smaller and make my head a little bit smaller here and pull it down here this is kind of what i'm talking about here with docker versus just virtual machine architecture if you're in a virtual machine architecture again apps would be like microservices for me how i would see them so I used to have a microservice running on VMA and then a you know, second microservice on VMB and you get the picture. So if I wanted 
five of one application running. I had five servers finding subdomains and five servers doing this and it scales up really fast and there's a lot of servers and a lot to keep track of versus Docker sits right on top of one operating system on one machine and as many containers and traffic and whatever as it can handle can all get stacked on top really neatly and still be separate in the ways they want to be separate for logging and air handling and stuff like that. For instance, in this container architecture, if app A goes down, it doesn't bring the server down. It doesn't stop that server from running. It just stops that one container. And with certain orchestration services that I'm going to bring in in the future, like Kubernetes, um, it will actually track those errors and automatically knock it down and spin it back up. So that's kind of some stuff that will be buildable in the future for me. My architecture that I'm building right now is going to look something like this though. And um, I'm hopefully putting out a blog on it soon to talk about it uh, with some partners of mine. But for now, this is kind of the automation uh, architecture that I'm using. So this Redis queue basically creates the uh, PubSub methodology. Basically it publishes uh, jobs to the queue using this cron job script. So it can literally just be like a small little script that will like go into, you know, either manually or whatever. I can control it even from Discord and just use like a Discord bot basically to like make a bot in Discord that I can just type a domain in and it'll push it into a script that will run and push it into my Redis queue saying like do subdomains on this. Or like I said, I have my three containers here for examples of like subdomain enumeration containers, domain resolver containers, and like an HTTPX runner container, right? So I could push a job in here that says like enumerate domains on this subdomain. Um, and any of these subdomain enumeration containers will be constantly pinging this Redis queue, seeing if there's a job in its queue, like, hey, are there any domains to enumerate? If there is one, the first available container will grab it, process it. Meanwhile, the other subdomain enumeration containers are still just waiting for the next subdomain. So it makes scalability, again, if my subdomain enumeration is kind of slow, I don't necessarily have to worry about trying to code in threading or code in anything like that. I can simply just spin up more containers of the enumeration scripts and tools that I already have. And same thing, these are all working independently and these are all working independently of each other and they all talk with just a centralized database. I use Postgres, it really doesn't matter. It can be Mongo, MySQL, uh, document-based, like w literally whatever you want it to be. Um, but I use a centralized database that way all of the containers can communicate with the database independently and pull from the database independently if they need information. Um, and that can be it. So these containers can scale infinitely both in replication. So you can have five subdomain enumerations and 30 resolver containers or any mix thereof. And also if two days later something comes out that I really want to build, like there's this new tool or I really want to add in like DNS permutation on the subdomains I've enumerated to try and like increase the amount of domains I find. I don't have to go in and edit these containers if I don't want to and redeploy them. I can quite simply make a new microservice for the new thing that I want to do. So if I want DNS permutation, I can simply make a new container and scale it out for DNS permutation and write code to do that quite separately. Meanwhile, all the other ones are still working perfectly. So right now, I'm going to try and code it in Go because I want to use the opportunity to learn Go. I've basically for the past five years been in Python. Um, so it would be easier for me to do it in Python, but I'm trying to do it in Go because it's a good learning experience. But um, this is some of the stuff we're going to get involved in uh, in Twitch streams and in later videos. I'll start like kind of going piece by piece on how I do each part and how I would recommend doing each part. Um, and basically, as I build out this new architecture, I want to take you guys through the journey with me. And if you guys have you know, recommendations or build this module or build that module or whatever, maybe it's something we can do on live stream or I'll make a video of. Um, but that's all I wanna go through today. So uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down the video. If you didn't like it, please subscribe and peace.